And now, if I click create from here, I will just create my pull request. And there you have it. This is the pull request I just created from within VS Code. Let's start from the beginning. The first step is obviously to install the extension. You can search for GitHub and make sure to not install this one because it's deprecated, but the official one is GitHub pull requests and issues. Also is the first one here on the list. As soon as you install this extension, you will see this button appear on the left bar. From here, you can just click this icon and it will start creating your pull request. In my case, I'm just on a new branch and I did a commit so that I can see in the compare changes tab that there are five files added in this pull request. Obviously one is red because I deleted it, one is green because I added and three are modified. Let me close this for a second and from the top bar you can see here I can decide which remote repository merge my changes from, for example my own fork of quick UI and I can decide the branch and I can obviously decide where I want to merge my changes. The most obvious destination is the official repository from the Quickifiers team. As you can see here, there's already pre-filled a title that is exactly the title of my commit, but you can change it for whatever you want. Here, in the description, there's already some content. But where does this come from? Well, if you're familiar with GitHub, you know that inside the .github, there might be a file called pull request template. This template is exactly what you would expect to find in the pull request text pre-filled. For example, if I wanted to create a pull request from the official GitHub UI, I would just click compare pull requests here, and this is the exact same text we just seen in the pull request file from the repository. Going back to VS Code, if I go back here, oh, did I lose the pull request? Well, actually not, because as soon as we created one from this button, this new extra button appeared in the left menu, so that we didn't lose the changes. For example, here I edited the title, and it's still the version I changed. From here, I can also specify if I want to open my pull request as a draft, and, before creating it, you might not have noticed, but here, there's a button to add labels. So let's say this is documentation and also for whatever reason good first issue, I can click OK and you can find here the labels I just added. But wait, I didn't want to add good first issue so I can remove it from here. And what if I also want to remove documentation? Oh sure, I can just go here, hit documentation, hit OK and nothing happened. Well, the funny thing is that while recording this video, I noticed this little bug on the GitHub extension. So what is the most reasonable thing to do now? Well, I just forked the VS Code pull request GitHub repository and I tried to fix the issue myself. As you can see here, there's this array that does not let you go inside this if statement if labels to add has zero elements, which means if you select from the quick pip menu zero element, it will not post this message. So I just removed it and now it works. So what a better chance to test our pull request uh, integration to create a pull request. This is not a demo one, but it's actually the pull request that goes fixing the issue we've just seen here from the labels quick pick menu. And now finally, I did everything I need, my branch, the target branch, I added a title, I added a description, and now, if I click create from here, I will just create my pull request. You can see the result here, and also, if I switch on GitHub, I can see that the pull request, we had 11, we now have 12, and there you have it. This is the pull request I just created from within VS Code. So what do you think? We just created a pull request on GitHub without leaving VS Code. Now, I'm planning to create two more videos one for handling and managing issues from that same extension and another one from reviewing pull requests and doing code reviews. I will link them both here and if you do not see them it's because I haven't published them yet. So you better subscribe to the channel so that you're notified when the videos are out. If the videos are already available, well, you can find them here. Thanks for watching and see you soon!